Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be covering a library that I'm particularly excited about. It seems like it only has commercial applications, but it actually has a lot of applications for the digital humanities, specifically if you work in archives. And this library is RemBG, and what it allows for you to do is something magical. And let's just take a look real quickly in this little Streamlit application I've built for us. It allows for you to essentially extract the main subject of any photograph. And why is this useful? Well, if you work in maybe the sciences, it could be useful for finding and extracting uh, the animal. Maybe if you're in photography, maybe if you have commercial applications for this, you can see a lot of potential there. But for the digital humanities or just anyone who works with archival materials, it has a whole lot of other applications. Let's say we wanted to look at a medieval manuscript and extract just the manuscript and not all the black background, which is quite common on a scan. We see that we can actually do that with RemBG. And let's say we want to extract figures from a newspaper, we can find and extract people. The RemBG off-the-shelf model is exceptionally good. Uh, I've been using it in archives for about a few months now for a lot of different applications, and I thought it was just too good not to share. Uh, so real quickly, how does this actually work? Well, it's built in, uh, it's from this library in Python called RemBG. Feel free to go through, I'm gonna link the repository as always in the description down below, but I'm very excited about it because it has the ability to real quickly off the shelf do what it says it's going to do in a lot of different domains. And this is quite rare when you're working with machine learning models. Usually you have to fine tune them to do what you wanna do, but the fact that this can work on cars, people, animals, archival documents, newspapers, uh, medieval manuscripts is pretty powerful and quite amazing. So how does it work? Well, RemBG is built on uh, a type of machine learning model called a UNet. A good way to think about UNet is it's a model that takes in an input image and it has to determine if that every pixel in that input image is relevant or irrelevant. So a zero or a one. And if it's relevant, if it's a one, that pixel is saved. If it's a zero, then it moves to the alpha channel and it becomes transparent and just a background essentially. And so that's how you're able to go ahead and extract this kind of data. Everything else is an alpha channel and only the pixels that are activated are actually extracted. We can see that that's actually happening by seeing these little fuzzy borders because it doesn't know exactly what to do with them. And that's not the model's fault. This is something it wasn't really meant to do. Uh, and likewise, if we look at the cheetah, we can see that it, we have a little bit of the material here underneath the cheetah, but overall I would consider this a huge success and be quite happy with this. It's extracted um, the actual subject of the photograph and ignored the background. And so this is a Streamlit application that I built to demo this, but let's go ahead and see how it's actually done in code. And what I have found, uh, you have a few different ways that you can do this in RemBG. You can use it as uh, images as bytes, images as pill images, which is uh, the pillow library from, from Python. Uh, you can also do it as CV2 or NumPy arrays. Uh, you can also load it up as a server from a Docker image if you want. There's a lot of different things that come built in. I have found in my experience that using the bytes version, which we'll see right here, is actually the easiest way to implement it. So I've got everything kind of saved up for us already so that we can kind of take a look at what's happening. So all we're gonna need is an input image. And uh, essentially what I've done here is I've replaced that input image with an output path so that it's gonna populate that in a different directory. Uh, the images, the originals are here in images and the results are here in results. Uh, and then what we do, and this is straight from the documentation, is we open up as bytes, so RB, the input image, and then we open up our as WB, our write bytes, as the output uh, directory, and then we just simply, in one line of code, use the remove class from RemBG, so we do from RemBG, import remove, and then we output it. And the reason why this video is kind of short is because there's not a lot to describe here. You just load up this library and it works. And we can see in these markdown uh, samples that I have for us, how it actually works down below. And you can kind of keep on going down, you can see all of them outputted below. So why is this useful? Well, in archives, it's oftentimes uh, useful to have background uh, things that tell you the exact color of an archival material when it's being scanned. The problem is, is that if you're trying to train a machine learning model to work on those images in order to like maybe have an image classifier or extract certain things from those images, it can be very challenging because certain microfilms, for example, from different libraries might have a different way that background is rendered. Meaning your machine learning model 
might not necessarily learn the features that you're trying to classify from the image, rather it can actually try to classify things like the different types of backgrounds. This can be problematic and there are ways to overcome that by introducing more varied data. But that's time consuming, challenging. Uh, one of the things that you can do to, to kind of remove that problem is simply remove all the backgrounds from your images and then you make your classification problem much, much simpler. And so if you want to actually use this repository, uh, this repository you need to have Streamlit installed so you can run pip install Streamlit and then you can just run Streamlit run home. So it would look something like this. Let me just type this out so you can see it in the video. You would run streamlet run home.py in your command line and you would populate this actual application to remove background images. Now, the big question is, well, this is fantastic. How do I actually do this at scale? Well, that's what I wanna cover now. So if I wanted to do this in scale, at scale, let me go ahead and make a new notebook real fast. And let's go ahead and see what this would look like at scale. I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of this so we can work with it. And I'm gonna also import glob. And so if I wanted to now go ahead and grab a bunch of files in one directory, I can say files is equal to glob.glob .glob, and I can go into the images and then I think they're all JPEGs. I can print off the length of files. And I see that I've got three files in there. Well, now what I can do is I can iterate over that data in a loop. And I'm gonna simply say input path is equal to file. And then everything else should work well. I'm gonna go into results right now. I'm gonna delete all these results for us. So you can see this actually work. And I can run over the entire directory. And right now, rembg is loaded up and it's running and it's done. It's already gone ahead and grabbed and extracted for me all of this exact same material. So if you've got 30, 100, 1,000 files, scale is not an issue with this library. It's quick, it's effective, it will remove everything for you. Now, there might be some things in your data that, that don't necessarily perform well. What I recommend doing is saving those, putting those to the side, and then doing those manually, and then training a new unit that actually is meant to work on your particular data. I've only seen a handful of cases where I've had to do this. If you all wanna see a video on how to go about implementing that solution, let me know and I'm more than happy to walk you through all the steps. It's a bit more complicated than my other videos because it requires uh, learning PyTorch or TensorFlow depending on how you want to implement the unit, but I will do a video on it if there is interest. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for listening. Hopefully now you have a, a good sense of how you can take an original image and remove a background from it and do it at scale. Now, if you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it via Patreon or via YouTube memberships down below. Thanks to everyone who already supports the channel. Your contributions help keep this channel afloat and free for everyone.